after Victor's death. The man on the ship thinks about his story. He wonders about the creature and where he will go now. He imagines the creature walking alone in the cold, snowy land. The creature feels very sad because he has no friends. He walks and thinks about his life. It's very hard. The creature remembers the family he watched in the small house. He wishes he could have been their friend and happy. He thinks about how he scared them and feels sorry. The creature decides to find a place to be alone. He finds a cave in the mountains. It is quiet there. The creature stays in the cave. He thinks a lot. He remembers Victor and how he was made. He is sad. The creature wishes he could change the past, but he can't. He decides to live in the cave and not hurt anyone. In the cave, the creature finds some old books. He reads. He learns more about the world from the books. It's interesting. Sometimes he sees animals. He is kind to them. The creature makes a small garden in the cave. He likes it. He grows food in the garden. He eats and is happy. The creature learns to enjoy small things in life. He looks at the stars at night. They are beautiful. The creature starts to write his own story in a book. He writes about his life and what he learned. He hopes someone will read it and understand him. The creature learns to be happy, even when he's alone. He thinks about Victor and hopes he is at peace. The creature knows he cannot change his past, but he can live well now. He learns that being alone doesn't always mean being unhappy. The creature's story is one of learning and understanding. He lives in the cave for many years, quietly and peacefully. People in nearby villages talk about a kind, mysterious creature. They say he helps animals and does not hurt anyone. Some people see him and are scared at first, but they see he is kind and means no harm. The creature becomes a small legend in the mountains. He is known as the kind giant who lives alone. His story teaches people to be kind and not judge. The creature's life is simple, but he is content. He remembers Victor's lesson about life and creation. The creature's story shows us the power of understanding. He proves that everyone, no matter how different, needs love. The creature lives a long life, full of thoughts and peace. He is happy with his small world in the cave. The creature's garden grows big and beautiful. He is proud. He watches the seasons change and enjoys nature's beauty. The creature learns that life is precious and valuable. He finds joy in small things every day. His story ends in the mountains, but it stays with us. We remember the creature and his journey for understanding. The creature's tale teaches us to be kind and open-minded. His life in the cave is quiet, but meaningful. The creature finds peace and a sense of belonging. He learns that even in loneliness, one can find happiness. His story is a lesson in empathy and compassion. The creature's tale reminds us of the importance of acceptance. His life shows that everyone has a story worth telling. The creature's journey ends, but his message lives on. We remember the creature who found peace in his own way. His tale is one of growth, understanding, and kindness. The creature's story ends, but his legacy continues in our hearts. The creature's tale. In a big old house, a man named Victor makes a creature. Victor is a scientist. He likes to make new things. He works day and night in his big dark room. He uses body parts from people who are not alive. Victor wants to make a man who can think and move. One stormy night, his creature comes to life. It's big. The creature has big eyes and very strong arms and legs. Victor is scared of the creature. He runs away fast. The creature is alone. He doesn't know where to go. He walks into the forest. It is cold and dark. The creature feels sad. He wants a friend, but he's alone. He finds a small house. He looks inside. There's a family. The family is happy. They eat, talk, and laugh together. The creature wants to be with them, but he's afraid. He watches them every day. He learns to talk and read. The creature reads books. He likes stories and learns a lot. One day, he talks to the family, but they are scared. They see his face and scream. They run away from him. The creature is very sad. He wants to find Victor. He travels far to find the man who made him. The creature finds Victor. He tells Victor his sad story. He asks Victor to make him a friend, someone like him. Victor is scared, but he agrees to make another creature. Victor starts to work, but he is afraid. He stops. The creature is angry. 
He wants his friend. He is lonely. The creature tells Victor, I will be with you always. Victor is scared. He runs away to get married. The creature follows him. He wants Victor to remember his promise. Victor gets married to a woman named Elizabeth. She is kind. On their wedding night, the creature comes. He is very angry. He hurts Elizabeth. Victor is very sad and angry too. Victor decides to chase the creature. He wants to stop him. Victor and the creature travel to cold, icy places. They are alone. They chase each other. It is a long, hard journey. The creature is smart. He leaves clues, but stays hidden. Victor is tired and cold, but he wants to find the creature. One day, Victor meets a man. The man is on a ship. Victor tells the man his story. The man listens carefully. Victor says, I must find the creature. He is bad. The man on the ship wants to help Victor. They search. They look everywhere. But the creature is hard to find. Victor is very sick now. The cold makes him weak. He tells the man, please finish my work. Stop the creature. Victor dies on the ship. He is very tired and sick. The creature finds Victor. He sees Victor is dead. The creature feels sad. He tells the man, I'm sorry. He says, I wanted a friend, but I did bad things. The creature tells the man, I will go away now. He says, I will not hurt anyone else. I am alone. The creature leaves. The man on the ship thinks about the story. He thinks about how the creature was lonely and sad. He understands that the creature wanted love and a friend. The story of Victor and the creature ends. But we remember. We remember that all beings need love and friends. We think about how we treat others who are different. The story teaches us to be kind and understanding. It shows us that being alone can make us sad. We learn that we should not judge by looks alone. The creature looked scary, but he had feelings too. He wanted to be happy, like everyone else does. The story of Victor and the creature is a sad one, but it helps us think about important things in life. We think about friendship, love, and being kind to others. We also think about science and what it can do. We learn that some things in science can be dangerous. We must think about what we create and why. The story of the creature's tale stays with us. It makes us think and feel many different things. We remember the creature who just wanted to be loved. And we remember Victor who learned a hard lesson. Chapter 1. The Secret of Bly Manor Mary was a young girl. She needed a job. She found one. It was far away, in a big old house. The house was called Bly Manor. It was in the country. Mary felt excited and a bit scared. It was so big. Mary was to take care of two children, Flora and Miles. They were sweet but a little strange. She wondered why. Flora was quiet and liked flowers. Miles was smart but silent. They lived with their uncle, but he was always away. The house had big rooms, long halls, old pictures. It felt cold. Mary heard strange noises at night. She was curious. The cook, Mrs. Groves, was nice. She knew many stories about Bly Manor. Mary asked her about the noises. Mrs. Groves said, old houses make noises, don't worry. But Mary felt there was more. She wanted to know. One night, Mary saw someone outside, a woman, she was looking at the house. It was strange and scary. Mary told Mrs. Groves about the woman. Mrs. Groves looked worried. She said, it must be your imagination. But was it? Mary saw the woman again, near the lake. She was not real, like a ghost. Mary felt very scared. She asked the children about the woman. They said nothing, but their eyes looked scared. Mary knew they saw her too. One day, Mary found an old book. It had pictures of the house and the woman. She was a former governess. The governess cared for the children before, but she had died. How? Why Mary wanted to find out. She was brave. Mary started seeing the woman more, always watching. It was a mystery. Why was she here? Mary needed answers. Mrs. Groves finally talked. The old governess loved a man. He worked here, but they both died. It was sad. The man's name was Peter. Mary saw him too, near the woods. He looked at the house, sad and angry. The children started acting strange. They knew Peter and the governess. They were scared. But why? Mary needed to help. One night, Mary followed Flora to the lake. The ghost woman was there. Flora talked to her. It was scary. Mary confronted the ghost. What do you want? She asked. The ghost looked at Flora, then disappeared. It was mysterious. Mary learned the truth. 
The children were connected to the ghosts. They loved them. But it was a sad love. The ghosts wanted to be with the children, but they couldn't. They were stuck between here and there. It was hard. Mary decided to help. She talked to the children. They were scared, but they trusted Mary. She was kind and brave. They planned to free the ghosts, to let them rest. It was a big plan. They needed to be strong. The night came. They went to the lake. The ghosts were there, waiting. It was quiet and cold, very cold. Mary spoke to the ghosts. You need to leave for the children. The ghosts listened. They looked sad, but they understood. The ghosts started fading, slowly. The children cried. It was hard, but it was right. The ghosts needed peace. The ghosts disappeared. The children were free. They felt sad, but relieved. Mary hugged them. They were safe now. Finally, the next day the sun shined. The house felt warmer, happier. The ghosts were gone. The children smiled again. Mary stayed with the children. They grew up. They never forgot the ghosts, but they were happy. They had each other. And Mary? She became part of the family. She found a home at Bly Manor with Flora and Miles forever. They often remembered the ghosts, the love they had. It was a strange story, but it was their story. Mary always remembered her first night at Bly, scared and alone, but she found courage and a family. She was grateful. The story of Bly Manor was told, a tale of ghosts and love, of courage and family. It was special. People came to see Bly Manor to hear the story. Mary told it with a smile. It was a good story. The children grew up, strong and kind, like Mary. They were a family because of the ghosts, because of love. Bly Manor was no longer cold. It was full of life, laughter, love. It was a happy place because of Mary. Mary looked back at her life at Bly Manor. She smiled. She did good. She was happy. She was home. The ghosts were never forgotten, but they were at peace, and so were the children and Mary. It was a good ending. The story of Bly Manor lived on. A story of love, of ghosts, of a brave girl named Mary, a true hero. And that's the story of a girl, a house, and ghosts, of love and courage, of finding a place to belong. Mary always remembered her first day at Bly, scared, alone, but she found more than a job, she found a family. The children, now grown, often visited Bly. They remembered the ghosts, but they were happy. They had each other. And Mary, Bly Manor was a legend. People talked about it, about the brave girl, the ghosts, the love. It was a good tale. Mary grew old at Bly. She was happy. She had seen much. She had loved much. She was content. The story of Bly Manor was her story, of how a young girl found her place in a big old house. People would come to see the house, to hear the story, and Mary would tell it, with a smile, always. The children, now adults, were grateful to Mary for her bravery, for her love. She was their hero, their family. Bly Manor was no longer a place of ghosts, but a place of stories, of love, of a family, a happy place. Mary's life at Bly was full, full of laughter, of love, of memories. She was where she belonged. She was home. The ghosts of Bly were at peace. So were Mary and the children. They had each other. They had love. They were happy. The tale of Bly Manor was unique, a tale of a young girl, of ghosts, of finding where you belong, of love. Mary often walked through Bly, remembering everything, the ghosts, the children, her journey. It was a good life, a full life. Bly Manor stood tall, a symbol of love, of courage, of a young girl who found her home, her family. The children always remembered Mary, her bravery, her love. She was more than a caretaker. She was their family, their hero. Bly Manor was warm, full of life. It was no longer just a house. It was a home, a loved home. Mary, now old, sat at Bly. She looked around. She was happy. She had lived a good life, a full life. The story of Bly Manor was her legacy, a legacy of love, of bravery, of finding where you belong, a beautiful legacy. People still came to see Bly, to hear the story, and Mary was there, to tell it, with love, always. The children, now with their own families, visited Bly. They told their children the story, of Mary, of the ghosts, of love. Bly Manor was a beacon, a beacon of hope, of love, of finding your place in this big world. Mary's story was not just about ghosts, it was about love, about finding where you belong, about family, a beautiful story. The children learned from Mary, about bravery, about love, about facing your fears. They were grateful, for her, for everything. Bly Manor was no longer scary. It was a place of joy, of memories, of a life well lived, a happy place. 
Mary's journey at Bly was remarkable. From a scared girl to a brave woman, she had changed, she had grown. The story of Bly Manor was more than a ghost story. It was a story of life, of love, of finding your way. People remembered Mary, the brave girl at Bly. She was a legend, a symbol of courage, of love, a true hero. Bly Manor, once a place of fear, was now a place of love, a place of memories, a place of family, a happy place. Mary's life was a testament, a testament to bravery, to love, to finding your place. She was an inspiration, a true inspiration. The children, grown and happy, always remembered Mary, her love, her bravery. She was more than a caretaker, she was family. And so the story of Bly Manor ends, a story of a young girl, of ghosts.